So over the past month and a half or so, I've been slowly making my way through the Realm Reborn Hildebrand quest in Final Fantasy XIV. There's something I had been meaning to do since I originally finished ARR back in early to mid 2020 after I first found out about them, but over and over again I had pushed them off for one reason or another, and it probably would have remained that way for quite a long time if not for a few factors. Those being having no clue what to do on stream, and regularly getting comments and messages in Twitch chat telling me to do the questline and make a few videos on it. So I did! And oh boy what a journey it was. Today I will be going over my experience with what is by far and away the weirdest questline I have ever played. This video is fully scripted and will simply be my thoughts after completing all of the ARR Hildebrand quests. So if you're looking to watch playthrough slash reaction type content on Hildebrand, I do have edited down versions of my playthrough of Hildebrand which I will link in the top right. For those of you who wish to stay for this video, I'll be going through my thoughts on the story first before moving on to the different trials that are unlocked throughout the questline. And this video will contain spoilers for the ARR Hildebrand quest, so do be warned. But without further ado, as always, my name is Akitem, and this is So I Played Hildebrand. The ARR portion, at least. And I mean, each case is technically an episode, so... Hildebrand Season 1? Yeah, it doesn't really matter. So despite going into the questline completely blind, I did know one thing about it. I'd been told time and time again that the questline was absolutely ridiculous, and often reached a level of absurdity that you'd expect out of a really strange comedy movie. Despite this being a warning that I'd been given quite often, I never really believed it, as I thought there was no way something that weird would be in an overall serious game like Final Fantasy XIV. I was very wrong. Being used to the serious and emotional stories that FF14 is full of, I assumed that the quest would be at best monotone with a few funny moments and I would have to find a way to try and keep them entertaining to keep people watching the streams, and I decided that I would do that by horribly voice acting all the characters. Of course, I then got into the first quest and had been doing horrible voices that honestly hurt to do for the first bit, and the minute I saw a man in a ripped suit flexing alongside a host of zombies in the middle of Southern Thanalan, I knew I had made a mistake and was in for quite a ride, but it was too late to go back in the voices and chat seemed to enjoy it, so I continued. The intro episode of Hildebrand definitely put its best foot forward, tying in perfectly to the overall ARR story of recovering from the 7th Umbral Calamity and to the Hildebrand quests that were present in 1.0 which I was not aware of at the time. The first case gives a great impression as to what the player can expect to experience throughout the rest of the questline by establishing the dynamic between Inspector Hildebrand and his assistant Nashu, and has many of the shocking yet hilarious moments that the questline no doubt built and stakes its reputation upon. Throughout this first quest segment, I was honestly baffled and often downright confused, as the ridiculous facial animations and sound effects were not what I was used to from 14, but I quickly embraced the madness and let myself fully enjoy what the quest had to offer. From the funny moments of an airheaded cat girl trying to blow up her boss for him to recover his memory, to the uncomfortable ones like oiling up the idiotic inspector while he moaned and encouraged the player. Needless to say, that is one of the weirdest moments I've had in the game, especially when I was reading those lines live. And on top of that, somewhere along the line I'd given a random female reporter a voice that is basically just a horrible impression of groundskeeper Willie from The Simpsons. This was a very weird day. Though despite all that, I did thoroughly enjoy myself, and by the end of the first episode, when major characters were established, the story started to build its overarching narrative with the introduction of a secretive thief who would always throw a playing card into someone's forehead. And scarily enough, I think the main villain in the ARR Hildebrand quest was actually built better and to be far more intriguing than the main villain of the ARR MSQ. Sorry Gaius, uh, ARR's pacing was already a mess, but you got done especially dirty. But when all was said and done with the first episode, I thought that the questline had already shown how weird it was going to get, and I felt prepared to keep going and try and put as much progress between myself and a bottle of salamander oil as I possibly could. However, in the second Hildebrand episode, it would establish a tradition of sorts. That is, always one-upping the previous episode in ridiculousness and weirdness, probably tenfold honestly. The second episode sees Hildebrand and the player taking on a case to find a relic known as the Treaty Blade. That is, after cleaning up a mess made by some kid who lost a pot. The second episode also introduces the final main character in Hildebrand's story, the gruff and sometimes rude Inspector Briargen. Basically the opposite type of inspector compared to the force of chaos known as Hildebrand. And despite the fact that they always end up working together, the two become rivals of sorts. This second episode is by far and away my favorite of the ARR Hildebrand quests. The characters in this part especially are super over the top and intriguing. No doubt due to the fact that returning characters and new characters are still trying to establish a connection with the audience besides, haha, look at the funny man! You have characters like Briargen who make sure things don't get too out of hand, 
You have Gilgamesh returning from the other Final Fantasy games, except he's called Greg, since Hildebrand cannot say his name for the life of him. And then you have the one and only half-naked superpower casino owner in Hildebrand's dad named Godbert. I'm pretty sure if this guy had been at Cartano, Bahamut would have lasted all of two minutes at the very most. Episode 2 of Hildebrand managed all of its larger-than-life casts extremely well, separating them and giving them their own space to shine, and bringing them all together to hammer home absurd moments and give the players a good laugh. This is also the episode of Hildebrand that has the best pacing and story progression, and is the only part that would feel complete as an independent questline rather than part of the larger Hildebrand quest. And this second episode also has a great conclusion and an even stronger back half where you get on the trail of the Treaty Blade, and the quest uses a great little trick to increase the player's investment by making the twist obvious to the player, but not so much to the actual characters. And then it constantly proceeds to tease the player with the characters almost figuring it out before they finally do and chaos ensues. The most memorable part of this being the cast hanging out on a snow-covered rock looking for the thief, not realizing that they were literally just standing shoulder to shoulder with said thief. And then it all climaxes in the final confrontation in the trial called Battle on the Big Bridge, which possibly has my favorite set piece out of any ARR trial, aside from Steps of Faith. But we'll get more in depth on that in the trial section of this video. Moving on to episode 3 of Hildebrand, which is in my opinion the weakest segment of the whole questline. This one revolves around Hildebrand and Briargen solving a case where they believe a bride to be the target of a future kidnapping. And of course, they're wrong and get into a whole bunch of trouble in the process. Yet despite being my least favorite part, it has my favorite scene in the entire questline where Briargen ends up believing that the kidnapper is looking to make an attempt on his life and ends up getting blown up. But in actuality, it was a giant train of misunderstandings and mistakes on behalf of Hildebrand and Nashu. This whole thing went on for like 5 or 6 minutes and I could barely contain my laughter enough to actually read the lines on stream, and the facial expressions of the characters were just priceless. But other than that and one other event, this was quite an uneventful and mundane episode which merely served as a change of scenery since up to that point everything was mostly in Thanalan and they wanted an excuse to do a mock beach episode in Lenosha. I also wasn't huge on the whole wedding plot and simply running around Costa del Sol which was by far and away the majority of this episode. And then they tried to establish some sort of sympathy link with one of the main characters of the episode named Arabella, and while it was well written, it kind of fell flat for me and just generally felt out of place. The only other redeeming piece of this episode to me was the wedding scene where Hildebrand comes in full cloud strife at the honeybee and just grosses everyone out, myself included, which was equally as hilarious as it was uncomfortable thanks to the signature witty yet stupid dialogue that comes out of Hildebrand's mouth. So while the characters and overall plot of this episode somewhat fell flat for me, it did have some of the funniest moments out of the entire questline, so peaks and valleys I guess. Moving on to the fourth episode of Hildebrand, starring none other than Ultros the Octopus, yet another classic FF reference that plays quite a memorable, albeit brief, role. This episode of Hildebrand revolves around a gladiatorial tournament being held in Ulda, where the grand prize is believed to be the Phantom Thief's next target. So Hildebrand and co go to investigate and, like a gun, they point the Warrior of Light at the problem and pull the trigger, in this case forcing the player to enter the tournament alongside them. This part of the questline is absolutely hilarious, and it is all thanks to Ultros who is probably the overall funniest character in this entire questline. And though this episode would already be decent if he wasn't in it, this perverted purple octopus carries the episode on his back to make it my second favorite episode overall. Wait a minute, do octopi have backs? Nope. Well, regardless, Ultros carries this episode. While the baseline plot revolves around investigating a Gladiatoris for possible cheating as a way to win the prize, and then discovering more about her character and the plight of Al Megans and Thanalan, Ultros is there to attempt to interfere nearly every step of the way by setting traps of all kinds which normally horribly backfire on him. And he does all of this while hiding from Hildebrand and the player, who are in turn hiding from Avila the Gladiatoris, and this creates a fun three-way cat and mouse dynamic between them. While investigating and questioning people throughout Uldaw is always enjoyable, Ultros' constant appearances make it so much more fun as whenever the purple octopus comes into play, he always has some sort of mischief plans, and the more backfires, the more visibly injured and frustrated he becomes. Thanks to his fantastic writing, every interaction with Ultros is memorable from his lecherous comments at all the females, which would be creepy coming from a human but are funny from an octopus and cause me to nickname him Hentai, and then all of his corny jokes, fourth wall breaking, and his strange habit of referring to himself as Uncle Alti. As I said, the underlying plot itself is fine as my wee brain just goes tournament? As in tournament arc? Did someone say tournament arc? 
But Ultros makes what would just be a repeat of the Stormblood Paladin quest into something far, far more memorable and enjoyable. And don't even get me started on Ultros' encounter with Godbert. That scene is absolute gold. This all ends up culminating in a trial called the Dragon's Neck, where the player faces off against Ultros, who of course has his ever-reliable battle partner in Typhon. Once again, we'll talk about these in the trial section of this video. And at long last, we arrive at the final episode of the ARR Hildeburn quest, which is by far and away the longest, and I would say was nearly double the length of the previous ones. This episode wraps up the whole overarching story of the Phantom Thief, and there's quite a few twists that I was not expecting whatsoever, and are handled better than any of the twists in the ARR MSQ. I didn't think ARR was bad, but holy shit, how was it being beaten by a joke questline? That's honestly concerning, and also a testament to the writing of Hildebrand. This episode is about as solid of a finale as I could have hoped for in the questline, and while it does not stand out in my mind among the other episodes in terms of individuality or plot, it is almost like a tribute to the entirety of the questline before it. Bringing back almost all of the major characters from the other episodes in some way, shape, or form, whether small or large. And surprisingly, this episode gives us the most lore about the fallen nation of Sildde, which once stood alongside and later against Ulda. And the fact that most of the wiki page about this place is filled with information from this quest alone is shocking. Especially considering the lore around the fall of Sildde is far more sinister and serious than many things within the MSQ itself. But despite being ridiculous, this is the most serious episode of Hildebrand, and handles the lore and how it plays into the story very well. Everything in the finale, and in hindsight, the entire questline, revolves around Sildid in some shape or form. And once the huge twist of your reporter companion Ellie being the Phantom Thief is revealed, and the context and importance behind what has been stolen is revealed, everything clicks into place and the seemingly random chaos of the entire questline fits together into a more organized chaos. This is something I was not expecting, but this is a mystery questline after all, so it was bound to happen since Hildebrand had been solving cases in one way or another. More just lucking into the answer, but I digress. The finale also sees the introduction of Hildebrand's mother, Julianne Manderville, who is probably the most powerful force in the universe of Final Fantasy XIV, bringing both Godbert, Gilgamesh, and the Warrior of Light to their knees. While technically serving as a comic relief character in an already comedic questline, and as an effective way to cure Hildy of zombification, it would not surprise me if she legitimately is the strongest in the lore. She is utterly terrifying and could probably temper a primal if she wanted to. But overall the finale isn't bad. Except for the fact that no, it's actually dog shit. Yep, the ending of these quests is complete and utter bullshit and just wasted potential. Ellie's sister is way too easy to apprehend and despite her long-winded speech of resolve and having been treated unfairly since birth, Ellie herself quickly loses all of that resolve and will the minute her plan doesn't go well and she just surrenders. I don't know if this was supposed to be a gag, but if it is, it fell flat. Building up the identity of the villain only to quickly reveal it before immediately bringing everything to an end just felt wasteful and it was like a satisfying conclusion to the whole case had just been stripped away, which wasn't helped by her then having a heart to heart with Godbert and basically a mutual love confession with Briargin which to me, felt like they threw all of the stakes, build up, and tension of the confrontation right out the window, which was a gigantic letdown after sinking so much time into these quests. Another huge letdown is the fact I wasn't allowed to kill her, and at this point, it had been over two hours into the stream where I wasn't allowed to kill anything in a murder hobo game. Fucking garbage! But to satiate that digital bloodlust, Gilgamesh shows up for round two, now accompanied by his classic companion Enkidu. Not really though, as this one is a primal, born from good old Greg's thoughts about himself being lonely. Sad when you think about it that his thoughts about being alone were just as powerful as living sacrifices and legions of devoted followers praying to a made up god to the point it summons a primal of all things. But at this point, that didn't matter, I just wanted to kill something. This leads to the trial base in Ampador Keep called Battle in the Big Keep. I sound like a broken record at this point, but we'll be touching on this in the trial section of the video. But after the primal Enkidu is killed and Gilgamesh is once more defeated, we get the true ending of the questline which is basically finally recovering the treaty blade that Gilgamesh hid, and some simple dialogue from the main cast that wraps up their characters and makes a few jokes, mostly at Hildebrand's expense, and then we get one final gag where the treaty blade sends Hildy rocketing into the sky, full Team Rocket style and alluding to the presence of future Hildebrand quests. I mean, he is launched into the sky, which is technically up to the heavens so he went heavensward. Ah yes, that reminds me of a certain expansion that carried on the events of ARR's story. Hmm. 
In conclusion, the Hildebrand quests certainly earn their reputation of absurdity built upon their many larger-than-life characters with a myriad of different personalities, put in ridiculous situations with ridiculous outcomes under the guise of an allegedly professional investigation, and is boosted by its great sound design and the developers consciously choosing to sacrifice their carefully rigged character models to achieve facial expressions that I have only seen in things like Jim Carrey's The Mask. But what I don't think is appreciated enough is the quality of the writing within this questline and how it captivates the player beyond simply being some cheap laughs. I say this completely seriously, these quests are better written than the entirety of the A Realm Reborn MSQ, and also the uh, first four patches of 2.x series, but I think a toddler can write better than that, so it's really not saying anything. I went into Hildebrand with absolutely zero expectations and came out having experienced what are some of my most memorable moments in Final Fantasy XIV and having experienced another great story which 14 seemed to have an endless supply of. I also got hours of content for my channel, but that's neither here nor there. While an investigative comedy is certainly not everyone's cup of tea to begin with, let alone those who choose to play a game like FF14, the Hildebrand quests don't feel out of place and are grounded in the world of the source and its lore. And even if it's something that does not immediately appeal to someone, they should at least give it a shot as the quests are definitely worth the time. So let's move on to the trial section of this video, which I have alluded to like, a million times in this video already. <laughs> Starting with the first trial in the questline, which is called Battle on the Big Bridge, and pits the player against Gilgamesh and a horde of green chickens. Zelda PTSD intensifies. But first off, this is an incredibly cool set piece with a badass intro, a low shot of the Warrior of Light approaching the area where Gilgamesh is hiding with the signature Kurthan winds blowing. It is legitimately an amazing shot. As for the set piece itself, well, it's a giant stone bridge with mountains in the background and a few different areas, starting with a little house-like area before moving into two separate rings where the actual battle takes place. It is similar in a way to the set piece that is featured in The Steps of Faith, but not quite the same. And honestly, I think my love for this one stems from it being very reminiscent of Elden Bridge and Twilight Princess. As for the fight itself, well, it's nothing all that mechanically in-depth, with it simply being dodging some small and slow AoEs while chipping away at Gilgamesh, followed by some adds and then more of the same with Gilgamesh, with the addition that he can turn the player into frogs, a dumb mechanic but silly enough to fit right in with the quest. So nothing really all that special on that front, but Gilgamesh himself is what truly carries this fight with his cheeky dialogue and normal theatrics throughout the fight, and especially at the ending where he jumps off a bridge holding onto the feet of a green chicken and just glides away. Yeah, these fucking chickens must be a Zelda reference, they look too similar to a cucko. They sound like a cucko, and Greg literally holds on to one and glides away like Link does in the Zelda series. I refuse to believe this wasn't intentional. Moving on to the second trial, which is called the Dragon's Neck. In this fight, the player faces off against both Typhon and Ultros in a Colosseum-like battle which lends itself to some very unique and fun mechanics. Well, specifically one. That being if the player is knocked out of the ring by one of the constant onslaught of AoEs, they will be able to quickly jump back into the ring and rejoin the battle after a brief stun period. However, if all the players are knocked out of the ring at the same time and are all stunned, that will trigger a wipe. Other than that, this fight isn't too hard mechanically. The fight bets everything on its constant onslaught of AoEs from both Typhon and Ultros, with the goal of knocking all the players off, with no extra mechanical depth, and having the two bosses next to each other is just fine, which normally is not the case in these kinds of trials. Relying solely on AoEs is a common sin in the ARR trials, so it's not to be unexpected. However, I do appreciate that the encounter design team did mix up the formula by adding the knockout mechanics and giving both bosses unique mechanics, as it does make it more entertaining than most ARR fights, but still nowhere near challenging and still somewhat boring. And on top of that, this is the very definition of a rinse and repeat fight. However, the fight does have Ultros in it, so it's automatically good thanks to his taunting and cocky dialogue, which makes searing this objectively annoying octopus all the more satisfying. So yeah, another Hildebrand trial carried solely by its dialogue. Did I mention how much I love the dialogue in these quests yet? The third and final trial of the ARR Hildebrand quest is called the Battle in the Big Keep, and once more pits the player against Gilgamesh, who this time has the assistance of the Primal Enkidu, who goes down like an absolute bitch, so we'll just pretend that thing doesn't exist. On a more serious note, this fight feels like a natural continuation of the Battle on the Big Bridge trial, though a bit more complicated thanks to the first phase having two bosses, each throwing mechanics at the player, including a mechanic that turns the player into a green chicken. At long last, the game is complete. Final Fantasy XIV, Green Cucko Simulator. I wasn't kidding about Enkidu though. The Primal goes down easy and that is honestly a shame as I feel that since it was a Primal they could have themed a whole fight around it. 
but it's quick death that lasts for some funny dialogue from Gilgamesh. Specifically the line, Enkidu are the bonds of our friendship so fragile. Even the great void walking Gilgamesh is unable to befriend of Primal. But moving into the second phase, which is yet another showdown with Gilgamesh. Beginning with some taunting and cocky dialogue before Greg finally gets to announce that for Gilgamesh, it's morphing time and turns into a gigantic version of himself with a few extra arms both on his body and in his hands, including what looks to be a 14 version of Excalibur. A nice little touch by the devs. Mechanically, this second phase is quite different to the rest of the fight and includes a much wider range of AoEs than pretty much any other trial in ARR, which is actually quite impressive. You have adds with their own AoEs, Gilgamesh with his standard AoEs, and quite a few new ones, including a net AoE which I didn't think was in any of the ARR trials, but I stand corrected. So mechanically, this fight is objectively the best, as it has the most variety and layers of complexity, despite still being easy as shit. And at the end, Gilgamesh even agrees to put aside mischief and to stop bothering the player. I mean, I give him 10 minutes tops before he breaks that, but it's much appreciated. I don't know how long this video ended up being, but that pretty much sums up my experience with Hildebrand. I went with no expectations and a disbelief as to how silly it would be, and came out having experienced some of my favorite moments in the game, and I hope I have managed to convey my thoughts accordingly in this video. And if you did enjoy this one and haven't already left a like or subscribe to the channel, please consider doing so as it really does help out a lot for honestly a myriad of reasons. Hildebrand was a long, although enjoyable journey spread across four streams, and I want to sincerely thank everyone who came over to my Twitch to watch me play through them live, and to those who watched the edited down versions on YouTube, and those who actually took the time to watch this review slash retrospective of sorts. Now I know that I have two more Hildebrand quest lines to play through, as well as the Briargin quests, all of which I plan to get around to as soon as I finish up some other stuff I'm working on, though I do want to know whether I should take care of the Briargin quest first, or go straight into the Heavensward Hildebrand quest. I don't know if there's a chronological order, so feel free to enlighten me. Finally, I know that this has been a bit of a different so I played video than normal, but now that I pretty much have all the MSQ related videos out of the way, I'm playing around with the formats of these videos to try and fit side content better, but to what success I do not know. So the feature so I played videos not MSQ might be a bit of a wild card, but we'll see. But I think I've rambled on long enough about things nobody cares about, and I don't think I have anything of value left to say about Hildebrand. So I'm going to call it here. As always, my name is Akaitem, thank you so much for watching, and have a great day.